pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wyatt here. Ingle here. Reister is on the phone. Uh, Bunce present. Step out. Yeah. Yeah, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Consent agenda. Anything to remove? If not going to have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. On the consent agenda. Uh, yeah. yeah. You don't need to roll on consent. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Did I do a voice vote already? No, you no, didn't. No, but we no. should. But we should. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's what I get for deer hunting for three days. Uh, committee reports and recommendations. Scale personnel, admin committee? Yep. Yeah. We met on um, Monday, September 23rd. Meeting was called to order at 4.45. Um, Christy and George had um, worked on a new hiring policy, um, but the policy was taking the personnel admin committee out of the whole policy, and we know that's really the purpose of the committee, so they're going to go ahead and rework that and clarify that, so they'll be bringing that to the next agenda. Um, just said that um, the public works director interviews were going to be held um, then on September 24th. Um, there was a um, discussion um, about the future of the police um, department and its staffing, and we will go ahead. Part of that's being taken care of in today's agenda, and then um, some more down the road um, we will discuss at a future personnel admin meeting and public safety meeting. And meeting adjourned then at 508. Thanks, Gail. Any questions for Gail? Thank you. Uh, Kate, Public Safety Committee, September 26th. We met September 26th. Sorry, my phone is turning so I can't read. Um, <coughs> I like that Colleen is named the Phil <coughs> Clerk. That was kind of fun for a name for her. Oh, she did that on her own. Um, we, we had both Chief uh, Marsh and Chief Banks here, so it was a, a very nice meeting to open with. A, a welcome to Chief Banks and a thank you for Chief Marsh for all of his years of service. Uh, we did talk about some, some updates to the Black Hawk County Gaming Association information coming down the pipe. Um, in the past, we've always been able to apply for up to 50% reimbursement for items through the gaming grant. Uh, one of the new things that, that we have been talking about on that board is changing the public safety part of it, just because it's such a large portion that we donate to different communities, um, asking for at least a 70% match instead of a 50% match. So that means we would have to put in 70%, we would get reimbursed back for up to 30. So it's just things to look for with other additional grants that we can piece together with those. Um, just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Um, talked about things going on with the uh, police department. We uh, had some information about speeding going on on Deal Drive between the co-op and the golf course. So we did put out the speed trailer there for a while. Um, we set up a meet the new police chief night at the uh, last week and downstairs here at the community center which was which was really nice um, chief banks gave some information about himself stated that he'd already visited about five businesses just to introduce and introduce himself and has absolutely been to the school multiple times so um, that's good and he's going to keep working on that to, to make sure he's around uh, fire department waiting for a new truck um, from Colton <coughs> because it has been on order um, so we are looking for some, some things like that with that, uh, just waiting for that to come in. Um, what else here? We talked about uh, the hiring of the police chief, which is going back to the admin committee to make sure that, that if there is uh, hiring going on for any public safety position, that it's just at least we're talking about it with the public safety committees as well as, as admin personnel. So just to make sure everybody stays in the loop. And we adjourned our meeting at 425. Thanks, Kate. Any questions for Kate? Thanks. Uh, public hearing. I'll open the public hearing on the proposed amendment to the 2017 Hudson Housing Urban Renewal Area. Which area is this on, Chrissy? Uh, the Urban Renewal is the area in Twin Oaks. Okay. And Deutsch Edition. 
Okay. It's an honor here. Uh, any written comments? No. Any public comments? Jim, is, it, is there a map of the area that's going to be now covered? Um, is it which? The only area that's getting added to the renewal area is the commercial lots. So it'll be it's this this area. Here. So so the total area will be just from basically. Ranchero, it'll be Ranchero to Highway Twenty. Ranchero and then west of Butterfield. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Did I ask for written or oral? Uh, you asked for written. Any oral comments? Just I'll close the public hearing. Uh, open the public hearing uh, regarding the approval of the revised preliminary plat for Twin Oaks Edition, and that is for the 10 7 plexus, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. 7 10 plexus. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting this today, I have apologies. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> written comments, Chrissy? No, I've got many. Any oral comments? I have a comment. Sure, Leon. Of course. <laughs> Leon Nelson, 4440 Ranch Harrell. Um, looking at the map here, um, I'm not sure how, how much this map and its depiction ties down what's actually going to happen. Uh, is this, can we take this as a plat map and the buildings are going to be setting about here and this orientation and numbers? Because yeah, we've got a plat map well. on that too, don't we? With yeah, that is distances. the plat map. That is well, it. There was one of the distances on it too that I saw. Um, was that yeah, there might Yeah, uh, some of these. Bas basically, that is it. From what was coming through on my computer, I couldn't read okay. them anyhow, so it okay. didn't matter. But uh, I went over and did a drive around the apartments over here that I suppose are going to be a great deal like these. And, um, I, I think I read somewhere in the background information there is supposed to be at least two parking places per apartment off street. Mm -hmm. And uh, are they are those to be behind these units? These pads back here? What's um, is that the parking? That's going to be the fire lane. And these include inside garages on each of them, with being the ten. <coughs> yes. Yeah, so one so, parking spot will be the, <coughs> inside the garage, yeah. and the other parking spot will be right outside. Yeah, so Leon, when you were looking at those three buildings up there, or four mm -hmm, buildings, mm -hmm. they'll look like the right-hand building that has extra stall yeah. inside. Where they have some, some in it. Right. Some e garages and some outside. Yeah, each garage will have yeah. one parking unit inside, so it'll be one parking yeah. outside. You know, when you look at these, and over here, and these two, they are really packed in there tight. If you look over here, when you get behind the buildings, you can see a little bit of grass back there. But everything else is rock, roof, and concrete. It's uh, really packed in tight. There's a token bit of green grass out in front, but nothing to do that anyway. Um, <coughs> these kind of remind me of what I saw in Moscow in the Soviet Union in the early 80s. Stack up apartment buildings as close as you can get them, one after one, all just alike. Um, we've got enough problem in North Hudson with aesthetics as it is now. If you look at it, virtually all the new buildings we put up are tin sheds. And we ought to try to do something to make it this attractive, appealing, uh, inviting. When you say tin sheds, are you referring to the buildings on the north side of Yeah, Riders the new Road? buildings we built right along Highway 20. Right on our front door. Those are the industrial buildings, not apartments. That I know. Okay. They're tin sheds. Okay. These apartments at least are going to be probably wood buildings, I suppose. But we ought to try to urge the developer to do what we can to make them attractive. Mix them up a little bit. Work on the aesthetics of it. Um, it would be good if we could. <clears throat> Bruce? Yeah, I just thought, uh, so it's seven ten plexes, right? Correct. Right. Twelve plexes, too? Or? Ten plexes, just those seven ten plexes. Is there more in, in the future, or is that just probably unknown? Uh, if they were, the only other lot that is in that area is to the straight to the west of it, which would be enough area for maybe four twelve plexes or four ten plexes. Something like that. Do they own that? Yes. Yeah. They do own that too? Yeah. And these lots are the ones closest to the industrial yes. street mm -hmm. that they're now? Right. I guess my biggest concern would probably be on density, cars, you know, one exit, 
you know, these units, what, 70 units times two cars each or whatever, you do math, but it could get awful busy. That's what I'm concerned. Jim? Is it seven ten plexes plus four twelve plexes? There's nothing designed on that. Mm -hmm. At one time it was conceptual, but that's been taken off the table. Okay. And is this is is this the area? I thought this area was supposed to be a buffer zone between the commercial and the residential. I thought this was set up as the area where you'd come into the So if it's a buffer zone, what you would you put in there other than apartments because you're non humans, uh, you know, in theory residential includes all people all people, not just people that don't live in an apartment. <coughs> So, so, so uh, it was pretty clear. I thought that there was an offset. There was a buffer zone between the commercial and the no. residential. The, buffers, no, there was the buffer one. zone would be trees or whatever between where the apartments are proposed to go and those 32 lots right there. So, see on the south side, the area available for screening adjacent property that will be. Uh, screening of some oh, sort, being that. trees, whatever. Oh, but that's like a couple of. Feet. Uh, I don't know how wide is it. About 10 feet? I'm not. I don't know if it's got. I believe that whole area was great. supposed to be buffer. The yeah. buffer zone no. was in the, the zoning between single family to multiple family to commercial, is what the buffer there zone was. There was no design for that whole area to be a no. buffer zone all by it itself. Was, it was supposed to be the <coughs> duplexes and the western home and all that stuff, and then apartments after that, so that's always what it's been. When it was originally planned, it was going to be sort of those twin homes. Right, mm -hmm. but that didn't come together as a plan for the developer, so. Yeah, because when you say the twin homes, Bruce, that, like the, the twin homes, the western homes, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was hopefully going to be this area. Yeah. Oh, and that's the area that they split now yeah. instead of being the duplexes of the twin homes is now smaller sized. There will be 26 lots, yes. 32 yeah. lots, something like that. They're 70 foot wide to be smaller houses. So it's a little bit more affordable yeah. houses. That originally so that was all, be the hotel. That time, was the that hotel. Was hotel. Yes. And that was the hotel, motel type area. That, that was the transition. Yeah. That was commercial. Yeah. I think yeah, that was, yeah, not yeah. It was commercial yeah. or industrial, then like mm -hmm. the hotel or right. that was the buffer in between residential. Right. And so now it's from just, a hotel to apartments. But now it's just residential. You know, apartments are. Re I'm just saying it's something to no, consider because there's not. apartments really, aren't residential. They're, sure, they are. It's a commercial development. No, apartments are residential. <coughs> it's a zone completely different. You know? No, I understand that. Okay. But I mean, it's people, the residents. Well, right. The hotels, people. I understand. Well, well, it's a it's a different thing. No. All right. So, yeah. and then I guess the the other question is is. Uh, are there, is there only going to be one entrance into the area? Yes. So how will they, act? I don't see a driveway into that area. How will people actually enter those apartments? It'll be off of fast lane. Um, they have not figured that out yet, but it will be off of fast lane. Um, and according to our building code, they are required to have a 150 foot, foot turnaround at the end uh, yeah, for the fire trucks. Basically this, essentially the street going down through here, they've got to increase circumference for a turnaround. For fire trucks. So we have to put a road in. Yeah, that's this will just be here. Mm -hmm. Nothing, no additional connections either to Butterfield or to Riders Road. But right now, that's just a solid road that comes off of Butterfield. Yeah, it's going to be right yes. there where George is at. Well, there's going to be another driveway cut in. Yes. Yeah, there'll be a driveway cut here to go in there. So it's not going to come off a of fast lane. Yes, Correct. it's coming off a of fast well, lane. Well, this, this is fast lane, lane here. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The access into those apartments will be off of fast lane right here. Okay. And then the, the road below it is called? Uh, I don't know. It's Pin Oak or something? Pin Oak Post. So that's also something. going to be a cul-de-sac? So that one that when you're drawing in, it's going to be a this cul-de-sac? This one they have to add in sufficient turnaround. But there's no exit from that. Correct. Correct. Just turn around for fire trucks to be able to turn around at the end and come back. Which is what our... Which we already knew. Which yeah. was something we yeah. discussed lately. Well, which was reviewed at PNZ and by the departments and everything. Mm -hmm. So the residentials, they have the temporary drive window right now. No, that's just for emergency access only. That's not. Off of Ranchero. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is there, there's no, no. There can be an emergency no. accident in the air? No. Anything else, Jim? Great. You got anything? Or Rosie? Well, did we, do we ever, have we ever looked at anything else? I guess that's my big question. Is all of a sudden we, we throw in, we had the motel going on two years ago. And now also <coughs> down the apartments, I guess, is it not jumping down? Yeah. It's really the commercial development we want in that area. 
we have buildings across the road, which is all commercial, mm -hmm. and now we're now we're going to apartments right across the road. Mm -hmm. So is that what we really want in that area? I, I think it is from a standpoint of a buffer. It was going from those single families to the smaller homes. But none of our other developments have ever done that. Really. I mean, if you look out over here, look over here, they're all they're all single family houses. And I think, in my opinion, that's what we need to keep in that. So. But that's the developer choosing to do that. That's not necessarily us to, choosing to do that either. Right. You know, we don't own the land. Right. Is this we don't have capacity. Yeah. No. Correct. I mean, I'm just saying we want apartments. So do, would you want to build, would you want to buy a house or would you have apartments? Yeah. Actually, I guess that's a question. I mean, that's what we all have to look at. That's well, a, I, think that's yeah, the, I think that's the risk to the developer. Has yeah. this been through planning and zoning? Yes, yes. This is on 6 0 6 0 passage. Do you know the proposed but the, rent you might be asking? Is there a, I'm the, guessing. Uh, over yeah. here, it's like 950. I think those are going to be 1,000, 1,050. And is it true they have to have one low income, correct? They have to have one low income yeah, right. to qualify. They will not put the sign on the door, but one of the units has to be reserved for uh, low to moderate income. Because what we've been doing is a hold back of 20% on all the TIF revenue up through there, and that will be allowed to be used by them to help in the construction. So these are qualified low to moderate income? There will be one qualified low to moderate <coughs> income unit in each of those seven plexes. Does they have to, be, they have to be able to certify that to the city in order to get the low to moderate income yes. subsidy back. Does that mean they can have more? They could yes. have more. Yeah, they could. Yeah, they could yeah, have 100%. 100%. Well, they, yeah. can, they can charge whatever they want to for rent. You know, they just have to be below. One apartment has to be below. But if you can charge, now, here we've talked about this, you know, before, the way the world is changing. A person like me, a single person that doesn't want to keep up with my house, that doesn't want to do this, but still has a great career and wants to do that, if you can charge a thousand dollars, why would you charge less? You know, these guys are full over here with a waiting list at a thousand fifty dollars a month. You know, they're not going to charge four hundred dollars a month to when they don't have to. I mean, they're in the business as developers to make money with it too. So absolutely, they could, but it's supply and demand. What about density? What's going to stop us from having the four twelve boxes? I mean. As far as density goes, I mean, let's think about that for a little while. Well, that's where it'll have to come to P and Z and be reviewed again. Well, it's like commercial. Last time I was at P and Z, as soon as you want to put apartments there, you can. So, correct. Well, Legality-wise, it's in a planned unit development, so it has to go whatever they decide to do with that lot across mm -hmm. fast track, the fast lane, <coughs> fast track, because they have to come to P and Z and then back through console. Because with planned development, we have that extra review process. Jim, so. So these do qualify. So, what area is qualified as low to moderate income under TIF? I'm not talking about a percentage of it. Well, through the entire 94 lots, whatever, the entire housing development has to have a low to moderate income set aside to be utilized for low to moderate income projects. None of those houses at this point qualify to low to moderate income. We don't know yet on these 32 lots. We're investigating that, whether any of those 32 that are expected to price out the house itself with lot is expected to be in the 175 to 225,000 price range. Mm -hmm. We're still doing our research whether that in and of itself qualifies as nowadays definition of low to moderate income. But in essence, the seven apartments, those 10 plexes, qualify provided they have at least one unit in each of them as a low to moderate income. Now keep in mind the low to moderate income was $960 or less, wasn't it? It was as far as rental rate, yes. Rental, rental rate, rate. But government so right. Well no, there's two different no, things though. That is completely different. different. <laughs> okay. That is not yeah, section eight or anything. If that you could address know. that, that would be that would yeah. be <laughs> it's a case of low to moderate income as defined by the state of Iowa, and maybe Larry, you could even throw in extra knowledge to that. Uh, but basically, it's not, it's not your HUD assistance programs. Right. It is really simply classifying the cost of it relative to the average. It's classifying the cost of the housing and the size of the family, and they have to declare, and they have to apply for low to moderate income. Uh, and so that is where the city has to, in order to use TIF funds for housing, they have to uh, guarantee that it meets the low to moderate income. I think your low to moderate income, you applied for an exemption. Right. For Blackhawk County, mm -hmm. you got 20%, mm -hmm. is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where Blackhawk County is, is 43%. 43. 
uh, the city of Hudson went and applied for an exemption from that, um, and they got a 20% load amount of income. So whatever the, the calculation is on the TIF, they, the city has to set aside 20% uh, of the TIF levied in the area against the houses, or some way to set aside the load amount of income, or 20% for load of moderate income. Um, and the load of moderate income can be spent uh, in actually any way and anywhere in the city. It doesn't have to stay within the TIF district. Uh, it can be used anywhere in the city. So yeah, that's, so that's my question. So effectively what we're saying is there's a number of these units that are going to be qualified as load or moderate income. But don't you have to define them? Don't you have to identify them? I think that's something to be aware of because if you if don't identify they will, Eventually it eventually will, will be defined as yeah, part of right. their development agreement. It has, to to be, it has to be defined it as what be they're doing. It will be defined to us. Yeah, because what, we'll have what they're doing for their project. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. yeah. you just want to make sure to do that because oh, yeah. otherwise it can be clogged. <coughs> Our attorneys and binding agents are making sure of that. Rosie? I, it, it concerns me that we're building apartments here now when our whole objective was to bring families with kids into the area for the school. And it's my understanding that these apartments out here, um, I think there's only like three kids that are... That's true. I, mean, that's what I, I, was I was gonna say I think that's way off, just as an FYI. Well, you can say that, Kate, but you don't know it as a fact either. Um, someone that I know talked to uh, Mr. Voss about it. So at any rate, it concerns me because that was the whole objective of having a housing addition in the northern tier, and um, things seem to be changing all the time. I'm not sure that the people who were building those houses along Ranchero are fully aware of even what's going on across from them. Um, I think that's kind of unfortunate because I think some of them are going to be surprised. And the other thing is, you know, I, I guess I agree with the thought process of is that what we really want there is apartments. I think it, you know, it would be better to have some of the more moderately priced houses. and. Unfortunately, I've talked to some of those young people that you refer to that are in some of the apartments that were built, and some of them don't have hot water, some of them their appliances aren't working, and they just moved into them, they're new. And so that concerns me, too, about the quality of what we're building out there. I think, I know you're saying you don't own the property, but you guys have a responsibility to the Northern Tier to make sure that what's out here <coughs> is something that is something that you would want in your neighborhood as well. And I just I want you to think about that. So. I'm not aware of any of the issues out there. Thanks for bringing that up. We'll check into it as far as water and this stuff. Relative to uh, your comment that uh, what we're really after is kids for the school, I, I would say that's not 100% what we're after. From my perspective, we're after tax base. Uh, and if tax base can add students as well, then it's a dual scenario. Would I acknowledge that there's probably going to be less kids per unit, maybe, than a person might hold for in a smaller single family? Yeah, probably, but I think that gets back to the tax base scenario. If we can get the tax base so where we can have taxes, sure, part of it going as a developer incentive to do it, to get it going after the 10 years, then it's 100% there. That's going to give us the funding to hopefully do some improvements to Ranchero, do some improvements to Butterfield, do some improvements in that general overall area. I don't think you would want to bring up improvements to Ranchero to someone who's lived there for over 40 years. And, you know, 40 years ago you had gravel, correct? Well, the very least that we could have for the amount of taxes that we all pay out there mm -hmm. would be for our road to get fixed, which unfortunately it hasn't. But something else I just thought of when you were talking about that. It's kind of um, oh, about the, regarding the tax base. Mm -hmm. Are we getting short-sighted just to get some tax money in order to get something out there to kind of make up for, you know, our losses for the sewer and water that we've got out there? And I guess that's another concern I have, a huge concern, is that the infrastructure is in place out there to take on all these complexes and, 
you know, we watch it every day. We see what's going on out, it's on out there with them having to drain the end of the cul-de-sac because it fills up like a lake once a week. I mean, I, I don't think that everything's kind of figured out out there yet, and now you're going to add, you know, apartments on top of that? I mean, I don't know. When are these apartments supposed to be done? Because in my mind, the sewer and water out there isn't really ready for <coughs> us. I don't know. I mean, I sell window coverings, but it doesn't look like, to me, that it's the infrastructure's in place. I worry a lot about the amount of traffic that's going to come out on fast lane and ride the road and how that's going to fly because we only have one exit. You know, I go that way a lot. So, I, I, on more than one occasion, I've almost gotten hit in that area. So, and I think anybody else who lives out there would attest to that. So it seems fairly irresponsible that you only have one exit and you're going to add all these people as well. But, you know, I recall there was a lot of discussion about having a second exit coming under Ranchero, and that was really met with a there lot was a of objection. Too, but that was a money issue, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Jim, on, the, on that, she brought up a good point. I'm not sure who all got. Could you tell us who was notified of this? Within how many feet? Usually, it's only you only have to notify people within 250 feet. Um, with it, as long as it. This was not being rezoned, so it does not have to notify the, the so adjacent property. So none of the new homeowners owners. necessarily got notified of this? No, it was part of the public hearing notice. Because they, were, they weren't just, rezoning. I'm just well, asking. Well, sort of, if, if it were you, Kate, you would let it. If that was just Tony, I completely understand, but then I think there's a lot of it. Everybody wants progress, just not in their backyard. I get it. I 100% get it. You know, and, and you made a comment that that I always relate to, That and, and Jack Lunen made a comment one other time about we have a responsibility that Northern Tier, which I 100% agree with, but we also have a responsibility to the entire community of Hudson, mm -hmm. which is all people, making sure we expand that tax base and make the right decisions. Um, you made a comment that I don't know about kids. I know of one apartment that's got four kids living over there. So, yes, there are a lot of misinformations that go around and a lot of, well, everything's horrible when it's on that side of it. I get it, I get it, I get it. But, it's horrible. Just, well, you are, though. You're saying their water doesn't work, their refrigerators don't work, their everything. And, I, and, and like I said, I, I get it. Was horrible. But, I want us to do it the right way. Right, but what I'm saying here, too, is that we want to make sure we do it the right way, too, but we have to look out for the whole thing. Yes, if there's something we can do to make it better, I'm all for it. You know, and that's why we've got, we've got places to run and, and, and things to do up here. So it is the whole thing. And I, I get the whole, I want the development just not in my backyard, because I agree with you. I probably wouldn't want it either. But that's why I list, that's why... You know, I've almost been hit in my street, too, and, and I don't know, it's a, it's a tough situation for us both ways, too. Well, uh, I'm going to make one other comment about that, because you're talking to somebody who has embraced change in more ways than, than you can possibly imagine. The leakers have been affected by many changes. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm talking about Blaine's Farm of Late, Walmart, High Pack, all of that. We, we think... Uh, Progress is wonderful. We just want to see it done the right way. Absolutely. We appreciate that, too. Appreciate Jim? Just the, the reason I was asking about notification, and again, it's, it's, it's more about if I just bought a house out there and I didn't know, is there a, a, an urgency that we wouldn't be able to notify people before this were passed? Is there, is there, is there a compelling issue on this particular one? There have been in the past where, hey, they have to get this done because there's a dime line or something like that. Is there a reason that people couldn't How much do you keep about? notifying? It's in the paper. Well, it's in the, these guys know about it, too. Well, you know, he the agenda. It's on the agenda. I think it's a reasonable question. It was, it was usually, 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 I think that's above and beyond. I mean, I get coming right. I just talked to neighbors tonight, and they didn't know about it. Yeah, I don't know anybody that. I mean, they don't, they don't look at the paper yeah. for the city council. And I, and I get, get that, that too. too. <laughs> and it's part of something, too. You know, even when we were dealing with the splash pad, somebody said to me, well, how are you telling all these people? What do you want me to do, go knock door to door? Know, door? Know, you know, I, I get it. You can notify people. No, because there's a certain right. responsibility on part of the citizens, right. too. Oh, I get that. I'm so, not, you know, I guess they didn't know about it. I guess if you bought a lot out there, would you want to know? That's I guess that's the question. So... It wouldn't take a lot, and that way you could say, well, we spend as much for a lot, would you want to know? Agreed. 100% agree. So, agree. You know, and it's, it's... Do they know? I don't even know if they know right. who the mayor's house is. Well, and how do you notify them of that? But that's, that's, that's sort of a good point. Or, 
right. You know that there's spots open to run for city council. They exactly. have these help in these decisions too. You know, we've got three spots open this time that nobody took out papers except for two pending too. You know, you start providing notice on something that's not required to provide notice on, then you're expected to provide notice on it. Yeah, right. right now. There's a hard and fast line yeah. on reverse notices notices on lots of things. So, so things so. have changed on this though. And I'm just I'm just saying it's it's something that can to be considered and if it's not gonna slow something down, it's it's something to consider. If you could do that, it would certainly eliminate a lot of resistance, potential resistance. Point taken. Any further comments? I think there was something in the packet about the notice needed to be sent if there were adjacent landowners or residents or within three hundred feet. And the uniqueness of this is there isn't anybody living now within three hundred feet of it. Mm -hmm. Jeff is probably the closest. That's right. All those lots are empty, yet to be developed. So you could send mail to nobody and it wouldn't help, I guess. Okay. Any further comments? Close public hearing. Uh, General Government, Hudson City Council maintains the right to weigh the first and second readings of the ordinances presented and <coughs> the third and final reading of the same ordinance within the same council meeting. <coughs> Item A, discussion action to approve resolution 2528, resolution to declare necessity and establish an urban renewal area pursuant to section 4034 of the Code of Iowa and to approve an urban renewal plan amendment for the 2017 Hudson Housing Urban Renewal Area, and that was the topic of the first item. Okay. Have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Which one? Okay. I'm confused. Urban, urban renewal area. First. Urban renewal area. Okay. Gail, did you second I that? did. Okay, I just want to make sure I had the right answer. Discussion? A roll call. Engel? Aye. Buns? Aye. Sabelle? Aye. Wyatt? Aye. Reeser? Okay. Five zero. Item B, discussion action to approve the first reading of Ordinance 824, an ordinance providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property in the October 2019 addition to the 2017 Hudson Housing Urban Renewal Area pursuant to Section 403.19 of its Code of Iowa. Okay, and there was no reason to consider waiving the first and second. No, they, right? our bond attorney had advised us to just go through the three readings. Okay. So, a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Roll call. Engel? Aye. Buns? Aye. Reister? Aye. Uh, Wyatt? Aye. Stabell? Aye. Five zero. Item C, discussion action to approve resolution 2529, a resolution approving the revised preliminary plaque for Twin Oaks edition. That would be for the <coughs> seven ten points. Was <coughs> Motion to approve? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? Just to clarify, this is not the final land. Just what I was going to say. The final. Land, not land use. Like, what do I want to say? Final plat. Final. This is the platting. This is not. This is the, the revised preliminary. This plat. is not the right. final plat, which means there is no aesthetics in this. There is no. This allows them to do this. Yep. To proceed with the. But we still to have to do the. Um, it goes to plan development. Is that what I want to say? Mm -hmm. So that it does all the aesthetics to make sure that the buffers are in place and yep. everything else. And the turnaround that's required by okay. the fire department and stuff. Okay. So, hey, I got a comment. Sure, Matt. For a question for a friend. Can you hear me okay? Yep. yep. Um, is there anything we can do in the future so that the thing that we present to the public and pass in its earliest form, like what we passed months ago and everyone thought that's what was going to be the deal, which was a hotel or duplexes or whatever, is there any way we can tighten up our process so that what we pass then is actually what happens. In other words, give the developer less freedom to change things in the middle of the stream. You have to change your ordinance. You'd have to change. Matt, Say more about that. Matt, it's Heather. You'd have to change your ordinance, and your ordinance right now allows for changes um, after a preliminary plat. So, um, with an application process through P, P and Z, I mean, you could you could change your ordinances and say that no changes shall be allowed. I, I, you, you might get developers who are not interested in developing because that doesn't allow for flexibility. Right. If the land looks good enough, they'll develop it. 
Yeah, but if they can't make any changes. I, I appreciate the answer. Thank you. Further discussion? Scott? Is it? Mine was along that same line as to what legal standing do we have to tell him that he can't do this? You didn't have anything to tell him he couldn't do this when he did it. So if you wanted to change that, you'd have to change your current okay. development ordinance the way it's currently written. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying the way it's written right now Which allowed for this modification. But it wouldn't be retroactive to this case. Correct. So. And the zoning is already in place for multifamily. <coughs> yes. Yes. And I think Greg and others bring up a good point. <coughs> Someday it's hoped, and Rosie too, it's hoped that that Riders Road extends on out through and goes into other ground. And, and I think that's where what we need to consider is whether or not we want to get tighter on some of that stuff for this, whether it's ordinance changes in the future or just, you know, more involvement. You know, I don't know what the answer is, but that next section, we've, we've heard enough over the last, what, two years now? Um, on various things going from, street, uh, you know, Driveways under Ranchero, not having driveways under Ranchero, having a 30-foot setback that conforms with zoning, but we didn't think about that. I didn't think about the fact of oh, 30 feet is a little bit closer than than we're used to on a curb. So a lot of that, I think we've had a learning experience. Can we do anything with this one now? No. Uh, I appreciate the input for the next one, uh, and I'll continue to listen as this one continues to uh, be the final pieces. Well, there is still final. Yep, so this final. Yep. That has to go through. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Yes. yes. My question is if it doesn't change anything, why do we even have to have this discussion? Right. Like you just said, I mean, you guys just said it's multifamily, what have you. you, you yeah. Mm -hmm. So why are we having this discussion? If nothing changes, the, the current situation as is, if we never came here tonight and had this discussion, what what then? Well, you follow what I'm saying? There's a case of me as, as mayor of people looking at me and looking at us at the council and saying we're dictators and we ain't going to listen to nobody on nothing, which is not the case. No, but no, not saying that. Like, it didn't, he never came to us with a change, no changes, nothing's happening. What, what would be built there? What's being built there then? Hotel? Well, it would have to be a hotel. No, it could be anything commercial or less. Is what it is because you know the, the, the big probably the miss in this one is that we our desire was a motel. That's why we passed the hotel motel taxes, hoping there was going to be a motel and bring in revenue. There was optimism by the developer that that was going to happen. Reality is set in over the two years that there's so many hotels going up that says, whoops, that ain't going to happen at all. So from a tax base perspective and the possibility of getting more students for the school and meets the desire of the developer because he says time is right. They were, in fact, they were going to move that off till doing something next spring and said, no, their investors say time is right. Get it now. So they're thinking, I don't know if that answers your question. So they're thinking that ultimately, you know, all these lots ahead of it are for sale. Right. But whether those sell or don't sell at this moment, those those ten boxes are going. Yes. And they're almost like the priority, basically. Yes. That's my question. Any further discussion? Roll call. All right, uh, Buns? Aye. Engel? Aye. Wyatt? Aye. Sabelle? Aye. Uh, before I cast this vote, I'm going to explain it a little bit. Um, I'm going to vote no, and the reason I'm going to vote no is not because I'm against development. I'm not against more kids in the school. I understand that it's gone through planning and zoning 6 to 0. The I's are dotted, the P's are crossed, everything conforms. But for some reason, I'm kind of to Brenda's question, we still have the chance as council members to vote yay or nay on this and it just doesn't pass the smell test for me i wish things were locked down more than they have been i wish things were more unchangeable than they than they have been because i think it's led to some misunderstanding and some frustration and so <coughs> for, for the sake of some of those people who have contacted me and for whatever reason because i have a vote on this i guess i'm, I'm going to vote no just kind of log it those concerns in the public record, so I appreciate that. Fair enough, Matt. 
four one. Uh, you're welcome to stick around for the rest of the meeting or go. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Uh, what are we on? D? Yes. D. Discussion action to approve resolution 2530, a resolution for approval to offer the position of volunteer fire position to whom is it? Bruce Ernest. Somebody I've never heard of. Bruce Ernest? Yes. He, uh, he lives out on Butterfield. He is already an EMT, perfect. so ah. perfect fit. Awesome. So moved. How many are there now? Uh, I so. believe that puts them up to 37 or 38. I was going to say 37 last time. What's our cap? 43. 43. Yeah, Getting closer. 43, I thought. Oh, I thought it was 40. All right, so thank you, Matt. Okay. <coughs> I'll second if Matt yeah. motioned. Uh, Which further effort? discussion? Roll call. Uh, Reister? <coughs> All right. Wyatt? Hi. Engel? Hi. Buns? Hi. Stabell? Uh, five zero. Uh, item E, discuss, uh, discussion action to approve resolution 2531, a resolution accepting the resignation of employee and moving current part-time police officer to full-time. So this is Tim Gilroy, who has accepted a position in Bramer County, and then uh, at the same time moving part-time police officer Connor Weber into full-time status. So moved. Second. Discussion. I would like to make sure we uh, um, tell... Officer Gilroy, thank you, because he's been here, what, 13, 13 years or 14 16. years? 16 oh, years. So Great we guy. absolutely appreciate Great. all of his contributions yes. to the community, and we look forward to Officer Weber becoming a full-time member of our staff, because he's been excited to do that for a while. So I will tell you, Officer Weber testified for me a few weeks ago and did a fabulous job, as did um, Officer Weber's mom. Great. Perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, did we have enough discussion? Roll call. Uh, Wyatt. Aye. Eagle. Aye. Tabell. Aye. Buns. Aye. Reister. Aye. Five zero. Item G. Action. Discussion. Action. No, we're on F. Correct. After and the transfer. Yeah. Discussion. Action. To approve resolution two five three two. Resolution approving the transfer of funds. And this is your normal monthly <coughs> transfer of funds, Chrissy. Yes. Yeah, so. so moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Eagle. Uh, Aye. Buns. Aye. Wyatt? Aye. Stabell? Aye. Priester? Aye. Uh, 5-0. Item G, discussion action to approve resolution 2533, a resolution setting a public hearing regarding the approval of the preliminary plat for Upper Ridge's third edition contingent on approval by planning and zoning on October 15th of Third order. Matt got Matt's it. setting it for October 28th, correct? <coughs> uh, yes. <coughs> That's the next meeting. Right, yes. right. So moved, second, whoever. Matt got it. Pat. Uh, discussion. Order. Roll call. Uh, Aye. Aye. Reister. Aye. Stabell. Aye. Buns. Aye. Wyatt. Aye. 5-0. Now the big one. Item H. Discussion action to approve resolution 2534. Yeah, I am numbered today. Uh, resolution authorizing and approving a loan agreement authorizing the call of outstanding bonds, providing for the issuance of general obligation refunding bonds series 2019, and providing for the levy of taxes to pay the same. Mr. Mayor, Larry Berger, Spirit Financial. And we have great news for you. We always like that. You're going to save us tons of money? Tons of money. Tons! <laughs> tons. Can you save my own too? <laughs> Matt, we're holding this one up to your speakerphone so you can see it. <laughs> okay, thank you. No. So what's our end as, result, Larry? As you can see, Mr. Mayor, we are asking you to approve a, uh, uh, your resolution, although the clerk and the mayor were authorized under October 1st. And the good news was the, uh, tra or the treasuries have gone up about 20 basis points, which means if we would have done this today instead of October 1st, where you authorized the mayor to do it, uh, we would have not saved the money that we had. So, as you can see, we did a uh, negotiated sale with DA Davidson uh, for the refunding. And as you can see from the cover sheet, here are your new interest rates, 3%. But what they did was they gave you almost $80,000 in premium uh, for a little bit higher interest rates. So what that does is that buys down the, the result. 
you did have, these were rated. I gave you a copy of that. I won't uh, bore you with that. Although, on page three of the uh, Moody's report, you can read it at your leisure. The one good result is 100% um, yeah, of your bonds will be paid off in the next 10 years. Very short schedule, and that's a great, great uh, bond schedule for the city. If you turn to a page that looks like this, after the Moody's report, I gave you the comparison. The old bonds, these are the uh, bonds that were outstanding from 2011. The next sheet, the back of that sheet, are now your new schedule. Now, what we did was uh, shorten the schedule up by two years because of the savings, and that will even give you more savings. And then the very last sheet is your savings. If you'll notice the uh, second to the right-hand column, the nominal savings, which is net uh, savings to the city, is $245,511.39. Uh, net present value savings, which is the aging of money by the time you pay off the bonds, is $174,573.87, or a 5.83% savings. We don't like to do refundings, and this is net to the city after all of the expenses. We don't like to do refundings unless they're at least 2%. And as you can see, you've tripled that. So my name is not Maggie Berger, who signed the letter. <laughs> Maggie was here in October to uh, talk to you, so she signed the letter. She wouldn't let me take the glory. And so uh, if you turn back to the cover sheet, we recommend that you sell uh, the uh, current refunding outstanding, or the uh, 2019 bonds. Uh, the $2,990,000 in general obligation bonds uh, for a price of $3,069,478.45. And again, that's with the premium uh, for a net present value savings of $174,573.87 or a 5.839% uh, refunding of the refunding bonds. So, uh, to D.A. Davidson of Des Moines, Iowa. I would answer any questions you would have. Again, this was done on October 1st, and we're just bringing you the results today. And Larry, on page two, it notes that September 24th, Moody's upgraded the city of Hudson that is correct. to A1 from A2. I don't know if we got that information out to the rest of the council and to Heather, but uh, that was through coming. interviews of primarily <coughs> myself that uh, awesome. we are stable and improved over the last time they've been rated. So you how are. much of that would have come into play on this? Nominal? Uh, oh, no. Uh, it's basically any time, because what Dia Davidson does is resell these bonds. Okay. So in order for them to report an A1, an upgrade, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, is very key. Now, I can't tell you the percentage there. I can't tell you whether that has any effect on the interest rate. So, uh, any time that you get an upgrade is a good story for D.A. Davidson to tell their investors uh, and making sure, <laughs> making, making sure that it is a stable investment for them. Anytime you're in the A category, the double A category, uh, you are doing quite well and you're moving towards that double A category as we go forward in the future and with all of your development out there. So, so thank you for pointing that out. Any other questions for Larry? Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion. Roll call. Wyatt, aye. Buns, aye. Ingle, aye. Reister. Reister. Aye. Okay. Sibel. Aye. Thank you, Larry. Put in there tons of money. Yeah, <laughs> super. I got it. Tons. Tons of money. Better than the other way when you come here and tell us not so good news. Yeah. So these are the I've never heard news, Larry right? say not good news. I, I've never. In 30 years, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard Larry say not good news. <laughs> Larry always brings good news. Because he sends Maggie with the others. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, informational items. There's about 11 things in the packet. Uh, reminder items. Regularly scheduled meetings held at the council chambers except for electric board and library board. Um, Public Works Committee meeting tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mayor's task force has been canceled. Uh, Public Safety Committee meeting is October 24th at 4 p.m. Personnel Admin Finance Committee meeting October 28th at 4.45 p.m. 
Next council meeting is October 28th at 6 p.m. and November 11th at 6 p.m. Motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I beat you. Matt, you have a second. All okay, favor. I got a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I adjourn.